Steve Klinsky, founder and CEO of uh, New Mountain Capital, which manages more than $45 billion of private equity, uh, credit fund, and real estate fund commitments. He also uh, helped co-found Goldman Sachs, a private equity group, back in the early uh, 1980s. We have, we always love having, not you, but real estate people on, because they're always, oh my God, it's great. It's really, uh, it, it reminds me of, of the movie Wall Street. Remember when he was buying, it was like, oh, there's nothing. You can't get anything he was trying to sell. He's like, Geez, I just, uh, there are no bids. But is business always good, according to you? Because Andrew was a little bit suspect when you said it's a gr things are going well, great. Are they going uh, great or are they always going great? Well, knock wood, it's been another good year for my firm. And remember, there are 5,000 private equity firms earning 30, 000, owning 30,000 companies. So whenever you hear a general statement about private equity, it just depends on I, I think it's you got to be a little careful and not just use anecdotes for conclusions. My own firm's strategy has always been built on non-cyclical industries and adding value. So the better we are at adding value to companies, the better we can do. And interest rates are kind of a background noise. I think if Senator Warren wasn't going to be on, you would be leading. You love private equity. You love uh, leading these interviews. But you're going to lead her. So they gave this to me. And it, it's, it's really your thing. Uh, you think private equity has been in, in the dumps. Well, no, I just think that right now, I think you had very high valuations for a very long time, well, you don't want, you and don't now you have interest. I mean, that's what I was going to say. You said that the, the interest rate picture to you is just sort of something that's in the background. I think for a lot of people, maybe you're, maybe you're different, it's in the foreground. Well, I mean, I think if you do private equity properly, it should be in the background. I mean, if you're a person who buys a house and has 20 master carpenters to improve the house, you add value to the house, and if mortgages are up a percent or down a percent, it doesn't really change what you do. It gives you a better buying opportunity. Well, I, started my, I started my career October 1, 1981. The 10 year Treasury was 15.84%. The highest interest rates in history were literally the day before I started work. And that, in hindsight, was the greatest time to enter private equity because valuations were low. Mm -hmm. right. So. You know, when interest rates move around, it means the deals done just before interest rates rose have a headwind. It means the things you're buying now at the higher rates are better because you're getting a better value. So do you then so, say I mean, yourself, and you're always buying and selling. Okay, so as then a firm. For, the, for, for, for the folks at home, yeah. to the extent they're able to uh, invest in private equity, yeah. oftentimes uh, the folks at home, if they do invest in private equity, would do it through um, some other institution that will offer them like a vintage fund. Yeah. of multiple private equity funds, and they say to themselves, yeah. is this the year? Is this going to be a great vintage, yeah. you know, eight years from now? Well, you know, and again, I think it's more, is this a great firm adding great value to a specific company versus, you know, we're not right. an index of, of, of passive assets. We're specific, it's like one restaurant versus another. They're not all the same. Uh, in general, the best vintage years in private equity have been after the bad news hit. So like in my career, 1990, when Drexel and junk bonds crashed, was a fantastic year to buy. At New Mountain, 2009, you know, right after the, we right. did wonderful acquisition. So, and it's nowhere near like that. This is not a crisis economy. This is, I describe it as kind of rainy weather, where you're more walking up the hill in the rain than down the hill in the sunshine. But, you know, it, it's, it's generally a better vintage for new money, right. worse for the deals done just before the rise. But a private equity firm is always buying and walking selling. Up the hill in the rain sucks versus walking down the hill. And well, decides, it does. I, unless, you're not selling me. Well, what could be well, worse? Well, well, it blizzard? does unless, unless a blizzard the climbing a mountain. Well, it does unless the tour got marked down, you know, by a tremendous amount of we cost. We always yeah. want to know whether you're harvesting or planting yeah. Yeah. seeds. Don't you always want to know, yeah. that, Andrew? And you're always yeah. doing both, aren't you? Well, well, and we always we are doing both. So, what are you doing and, and I, 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 I got to be careful. So I'm not trying to market my fund, but we've sent 15 billion of cash backs to our LP since January 21 under these conditions, including it was public. We sold a company called Signify this year to CVS. And the story of Signify, it started as two little businesses, one called Advance, one called Senseo for about 500 million. And it ended up as about 8 billion of value. And the story is how, not how interest rates change. The story is, well, what did we do to that company to make it go from one value to another? And that is the story of okay. private equity property. Well, let me ask you this. Let me ask you a separate question. Given yeah. all the different businesses you have in, yeah. in, in your portfolio today, yeah. you do have a pretty good read on yeah. consumer sentiment yeah. in terms some of the B2B businesses that you own in terms yeah. of what kind of what, what kind of expenditures other businesses want to spend and how people are feeling. What do you see there? Yeah, it's definitely when I say a rainy economy. So, for example, 
in some industries there has been destocking of inventory. Under COVID, when supply chains were tight, customers would build up their inventory balances and cash was free. So you can get a temporary lag as people destock inventory. Uh, you know, there are some industries that are slower than they were. There are other industries that are doing greater, faster. But the key is, we're not a jellyfish floating with a current. You want to be a boat with a motor and don't say, well, the current's going one mile to the left, now the boat can't drive. You're supposed to be a value creation. We think of ourselves as a business that builds businesses. We now have 250 people at my firm. Like, we just bought a business called, uh, from Perkin Elmer. Right. Not only do we have seven private equity people, and we've been doing those companies since Avant Tour 13 years ago, which went up to $20 billion of value, but as we buy that, we had 10 operating partners working on the analysis of how we can improve Perkin Elmer. And it's a very, very large amount of things we hope to improve on it. If we achieve that, that will make the value, not whether interest rates are 50 basis points higher or lower. Steve, let me ask you, um, Steve Schwarzman at, at uh, Blackstone told his companies, the leaders of his companies, more than a year and a half ago, that they should be really battening down the, yeah. the hatches, trying to prepare for a storm that was coming, because everybody thought the, the economy was going to go into a recession. Um, the companies all kind of did just that. Have they been through the preparation time? Are they ready, and are your companies ready for what may be around the corner next year? The, the worst, and I have a lot of respect for Blackstone and Steve Schwarzman and all that. Uh, the worst pinch point for private equity in recent years was September of 21, before anyone was talking about it. You could, the inflation was hitting and no one was admitting it in the public policy world. Supply chains were super tight. The same way we worked with our companies to get them through COVID, we worked with them to get through pricing, supply chain avail availability. That's generally all caught up. I mean, the margins, if you, you know, also whether you do well or not in this economy, if you're a good company that can pass on price and hold share, you've caught up. And uh, if anything, there's some deflation. The actual, in you know, there's different parts that build inflation. So labor costs are, are still rising. Healthcare costs come in late. But like the ingredients in, for a tin can to, on a shelf in a truck may be going lower, not up at the moment. So, you know, it's, it's not a one-word answer, but we, we batten down, you know, we're always battening down the hatches, and we, but the real effort started September 21.